Hello, everybody. I'm Gabe Larson, and I lead marketing for customer here at Meta. The goal of this session is to help businesses understand how to leverage messaging as part of their customer care strategy. Now, as mentioned in the keynote today, customer integrated with Meta because we want customer service teams to deliver personal, powerful support at scale in the messaging channels people use most. Customer is an integrated omni-channel CRM enabling personal customer service across email, chat, social, and voice, all from a single interface. Now, providing good customer service and experiences has become the benchmark for defining good business. And often, what makes the difference in customer experience is communication. Businesses that offer communication channels that people prefer are more likely to buy, make a purchase, and recommend businesses to a friend. Because businesses know the value of communication, they have continually adapted to new communication methods to make themselves more accessible and more connected. In fact, in a study conducted with 2,000 internet users in as early as 2018, it was found that the average business relied on six to seven different communication channels just to keep up with communicating with customers. Unfortunately, the majority of people still feel that communication with business is lacking. And truthfully, I'm one of them because communication doesn't necessarily mean connection. And increasingly, a feeling of connection is what people expect from businesses. But that's where messaging comes in. In a meta study in 2020, 75% of international adults said, I wanna be able to communicate with businesses in the same way that I communicate with friends and family through messaging. Look, messaging brings all the best parts of communication with people online. The benefits of, of it are being familiar and can make it more about than just communication. It's really about conversation. And all these individual benefits add up to something bigger. They make people feel comfortable enough to express their needs. Conversation is what creates relationships. So how do you start integrating conversation in your customer care workflows? Here's a couple things to consider. One, you have to create entry points for conversations by building channel awareness. Remember, you want to meet your customers on the channels they prefer and then promote those channels via website and ads and even other communication channels so they're easily accessible. Two, drive messaging efficiency with how you manage the business to consumer conversation thread. The sweet spot for customer care efficiency is finding that middle ground between resolving customer queries really quickly at scale, while optimizing for business resources. With messaging solutions, you're able to achieve a balance between automations and humans. Using chatbots to answer common queries and then transferring those trickier conversations from a chatbot to a live agent are all ways you are able to deliver better internal efficiency. And then lastly, customer queries through messaging services make it easy to create exit points to resolve customer issues. You're able to integrate your conversation workflow into your CRM or other systems to provide issue tracking and reporting and co conversions or order history, which allows you to better service and personalize customer interactions. And with that, I'd like to bring on our special guests, Dave Wiener, founder and CEO of Priority Bikes, and Amy Coleman, Head of Customer Insights and Experience at Lulu's to talk about this idea of turning conversations into customer advocacy. So as we kick off, um, I'd like to welcome you both. But Amy, maybe we can start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do over there at Lulu's. Yeah. Hi. Um, I absolutely love customers. Um, it comes from an innate love of people. Um, and what I love about my role at Lulu's is I get the opportunity to listen and learn uh, from our customers. And I think it's so valuable. And, um, you know, it helps us to become a customer obsessed brand who's always listening and learning. That is going to be fun to dive into a little bit more. Um, Dave, over to you. Thanks, Gabe. It's a complete honor to be here. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Priority Bicycles, and we started the company eight years ago with this passion for low-maintenance bikes, making bicycles easier. All of our bikes feature a belt drive and some innovative features that a lot of customers haven't seen or heard of before. When we launched the company, we started on Kickstarter, and so we've always been a customer-centric company. 
we wouldn't have a company if it weren't for original backers. And every customer experience we look at is an extension of our brand. How are we going to bring this person in? How are they going to help us grow? How are we going to help them on their bicycle journey? Love it. Love it, man. I did not know you guys were a Kickstarter. That's interesting. I'll have to learn more about that. Um, awesome. Well, thank you again both for joining. I want to jump right into our talk track about this idea of using messaging and helping it turn into advocacy. But I want to start big picture for a minute. Get both of your takes on just how the market's currently adapting to all the changes we're experiencing. Many brands feel like customer behavior, it's morphed, it's changed over the past couple of years. And I'm interested to hear how have your customers changed? Um, Dave, maybe let's start with you. Absolutely. So, you know, with customers, when they come to us with, with something that they need with their bike or whether they're interested in learning more about our bikes or they have a problem with an existing bike, what we found is that speed is one of the most important things we can do today. We need to get back to that customer quickly. So as a company, we do customer support 365 days a year. Our average response time is under 10 minutes. And that's important because if somebody's coming in and they want to get to know us, we want to show them that we absolutely care and we're going to get back to them quickly. And on the flip side, if somebody's had an issue, we want to make sure that we squash it before it really is an issue. And consumers today, they, they're getting more and more conditioned that support should take a long time. And we want to be the opposite of that. And we feel when we can be the opposite of that that we can start to win hearts and minds and, and get a customer for life. 365 days, no breaks, huh? Um, I guess no no, uh, no breaks for the, the, the weary. Uh, Santa always needs a little helper the morning of Christmas. So if you're assembling your child's bike Christmas morning and you're not sure how to do something, we need to be there to help Santa. <laughs> Amy, let's flip to you for a second. How has consumer behavior changed? How, how are your customers different over the last few years? Sure. I think, you know, I'm, I definitely agree with Dave big time. You know, the, the speed is important. I think what has really changed and kind of developed is um, after the pandemic specifically, there was a desire to connect and a desire to be treated as an individual, to be heard more than um, in the past. I think before they could express what was kind of going on and their problem at hand and an agent at that time probably could get away with just saying, no problem, here's your solution. But what we really recognized is that when a customer was recognized for something that they shared, maybe it was something personal, if we acknowledge that and share empathy for their situation, we are really, really, really winning customers um, out there. And I think that that's the biggest thing that we've noticed is the need to treat individuals as such. Um, there's so much competition out there. Um, so the little things matter. They matter. They matter a lot to each customer. So maybe let's dive in to a couple of those concepts in a little more, um, a little more detail. Maybe let's start with personalization. I, <laughs> I know personalization sometimes can be somewhat of a buzzword in this customer experience, customer service space, but I think most of us would agree it, it is super important. Um, you were just clicking on it a little bit, Amy, but how is, is your company, you know, really started to make a difference in driving personalized service? Yeah, Amy, let, maybe you, you'd start. So let's have you finish. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, specifically on the customer experience side and customer service side, um, it, all brands kind of are at a place right now and have been for a little bit. I think some are actually behind in some ways. The humanity of customer service can get lost um, in a traditional call center. And I think that that's one of the biggest downfalls of most of the ticketing systems that are out there. It's a totally shifted focus. It goes away from the reason why we're there, which is to help people. Um, and it becomes more like a data entry job, something you're doing over and over and over again. It becomes really mundane and redundant. Um, so I think that, you know, something that we've done is we've been able to really um, create a tailored experience and unique experience for our customers um, by providing the agents the quality time needed to engage on a human to human, more personal level level um, without the distractions of researching across multiple systems. Um, our agents have the time to create customers like a human and not a number. Um, and it actually, in turn, because it's good for the customer, it's so good for the agent. We end up with less burnout. 
Um, we are able to give time and energy to the human beings that contact us and create a really special experience, um, you know, for the customers that we work with. Personalization, what role does it have over at Priority Bicycles? How does that play in your world? Well, I, I think just to echo what Amy said, it's about empowering your CX team, making sure that they're, you know, everybody on our CX team is a cyclist. They all know how to ride, assemble. They've ridden every model. They can tell you the differences and they're super invested in getting more butts on bikes. And whether it's our bike or someone else's, our team rides and they want to empower our customers to ride. And so when a customer contacts us, speed, like we talked about, is really important. But together with speed and part of how we achieve speed is in personalization. So, for example, uh, that, that mother or father who might be assembling a bike Christmas morning, they're frantic and they want to get someone fast and, and they need an answer fast. Or, or you're out on your bike ride and you've fallen and something doesn't seem right and you're on WhatsApp and you're, you're sending us a photo and saying, what do I do here? So the speed that we get to them is important, but in that speed becomes the personalization because we need to know when that person comes in through call it WhatsApp or through SMS, we need to know exactly who they are. We need to know what model they bought, when they bought it. We might need to know the serial number to know what build they have because we have some bikes that have been running for seven years and the spec seven years ago is different than the spec today. So we need to know quickly who they are, what they own, so that if they have questions about it, we can get them a context-specific personal answer. And we don't need to ask them, when did you buy it? What was your order number? Where did it ship to? We can just tell when they come in through whatever channel it is, hey, Amy, I'm so glad you have a priority. How can I help? And when Amy says, I fell and my seat got torn, we can say, great, here's a link to a new one. Or I'm assembling my child's bike and I'm stuck on step four. We can say, here's a photo, send me back a photo we can get to the heart of what's ailing them. And often when somebody has a problem, they're coming to us from this place of slight vulnerability. And so we just wanna meet that vulnerability with incredible compassion. And part of the way we do that and enable our reps who really just, again, are cyclists and want everyone to have a fun time on bikes, is we know exactly who they are, what they have, and then we can quickly get to what they need. And that's all anyone wants, the quick answer. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, as I hear that, I think that's, I'm saying, wow, because it doesn't happen. I mean, some of the things you're saying, I call customer service often and I just don't get that type of information. I'm always being asked the basic questions. Who are you and what do you need and what did you purchase? And, and to hear you be able to combine, I think this is probably the magic. It's taking some of the communication channels and then being able to bridge that information about past purchases or past orders or different issues that maybe have come up, have that front and center to the reps so that they can be able to then empowered to just jump right in and solve that. It doesn't, part of me saying, wow, but part of me saying, Dave, that sounds obvious, right? I mean, isn't that what we all want? But we just, we just don't get there. And my follow-up would be what's holding the company's back from getting there. Is it, is it back to the system stuff? Is it the effort how come we can't get to the place you just explained? That's what we all want. Just get me there. Previously, we had spaghetti code of all these different, you know, persons looking at a screen and they got to have four different systems open. So now, no matter what channel somebody comes in, we can see a 360 view of the customer. And seeing a 360 view of the customer enables us to bring our passion for bikes to a solution really quick. Um, okay, well, Dave, you bet you talked a little bit about channels. I want to get into that for just a second. Um, Amy, you mentioned it as well, but how important are modern channels? Um, you know, like social channels, Messenger, WhatsApp, um, versus some of the more traditional phone and email to your current customer service program or plans. Talk to me about how that currently works and where you see that going in the future. Yeah, Gabe, I mean, it, it's incredible, right? So when we started eight years ago, it was phone and email. And now phone and email are down. We are not seeing anywhere near the volume of phone and email as we used to. It's chat, it's SMS, it's WhatsApp, it's Facebook Messenger, it's Instagram uh, it DMs. It, there's there's so, many, uh, so many modes of communication that people are coming to us. A big one right now is video and, and being able to do video just like you and I are with our customers, especially because our product is so technical. So there's, there's a lot of communication channels that we can talk to people on. And what we found is 
it's just important to meet people where they want to be met. You find people that want to be on Facebook Messenger all day, that's their life. You find people that want to be on WhatsApp all day, and that's their life. And then you find people that they only want to communicate with you on email, and don't you dare call them. So, you know, it just depends on what channel uh, the person wants to use. And, and really, our job as a customer-centric organization is to be agnostic. We want to talk to customers, and however they want to come to us is how we want to come to them. And it it's both in sales, it's in marketing, and then it's in support. And so it's all through that journey of a customer life cycle, and it's whether they need to check out on their initial purchase or whether we're sending them a link for a replacement part they need or whether it's we're sending them a video on how to, how to maybe size themselves on a bike. We need to be able to go across all these different channels and also these mediums of, of how we communicate with customers. It's funny. It still comes up a lot. People say, you know, how do you choose which channels to support your customers on? And I say, you don't choose. They, <laughs> you know, they choose for you, you know? And so um, I feel like that's something that's a talk track that I often give. And I'm always, like, why do people ask that? It seems kind of obvious to me, but I love that you highlighted that point because it is it. You got to meet them where they are. And if they happen to be moving towards modern channels, as we're seeing a shift everywhere happening, as we've heard about in this whole conference, then you probably need to staff up and do that. And I do have a follow-up, Dave. I'm going to get you back in just a second. But uh, Amy, a broad, high level, what's your thoughts on modern channels, social, et cetera, and how that fits into it? You mentioned Instagram earlier. Maybe give us a little bit of flavor there of how that plays in your business. What role does it have? And I mean, echoed big time on everything that Dave said. I think the biggest thing for us, too, is that a lot of our customers aren't just coming in on the one channel, you know, like it's multiple channels, two or three sometimes. And it's important for us and all folks nowadays, I think that are, you know, running customer um, call centers that you use a tool like customer with a K um, that allows uh, us the ability to offer that omni-channel solution, meaning that person can contact us however they want, you know, Instagram DM, like, Hey, I left a comment on your post. I'm looking to buy this dress and then later, if they want to follow up with us via text after they've placed their order, we can see it in one place. And I think that that has truly changed the game for our agents specifically and our customers because it's easy. You know, like customer service should not be as painful as it is for so many companies. I mean, it's become literally painful, like where you dread working with a customer service team because it's just a mess. It just ends up a mess. But by using customer, we're able to have everything just right there. And the customer can um, communicate with us on whatever channel they want. And we see it and we're able to help them. Um, and so, again, you know, we keep this like an ongoing conversation as we're building a relationship with this person because of the fact that we're able to um, have them all, all the different ways they've contacted us in one spot. It's probably my biggest frustration is the channel switching concept. You know, I'm 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 chatting with someone and then maybe I do go to phone call or, and then they have they don't know that we were chatting about that. You know, I was like, I was just I was just I was just chatting with you for 15 minutes. Like, how did you not connect the dots between channels? And that is I think that's a bigger I mean, that's this happens so, so, so often. Um, just one more click. I had actually a couple of follow ups on channels. I wanted to hit you both on Amy. I want to start with you just. Instagram has become such a powerful tool for um, for you guys, it sounds like. Um, and I hit a little bit on channel of choice. And we kind of, Dave and I were joking about that just a little bit. But when you decide new channels, um, how do you go about that? What advice would you give customers to think about what channels should I be delivering so that I can deliver great customer experience? I think everybody needs to know who their customer is on sort of a macro level. Um you, you can't expect customers to do what you want them to do. I think that that is um, sort of like a, it is a systemic issue in a lot of organizations where the customer service is like a back half thought when really it should be front and center, in my opinion. I mean, your whole business was created to do something for a customer whether it's to sell something, solve a problem, whatever. It is literally for the customer, and yet so many customer service teams are not for the customer 
um, mainly because of the fact that they're really limiting how people can reach them. I've I've heard a lot of uh, companies making changes, eliminating channels entirely, just because maybe they can't support it. But I think it's time that we have to think about it differently. You've got to know who your customer is and don't force them into this one size fits all model. You know, listen to the data in your CX systems and really work to understand who it is that you're helping and what they want. You know, I, I our customer base skews to the younger end. So messaging is huge for them. You know, chat, SMS, Instagram, DM. Um, and so it, it really is important that you think about who it is that you're serving and if you're actually serving them with your customer service team. OK, one more question on the, the channel stuff, because, Dave, you mentioned a little bit about video and. I always get, I think 10 years ago, I was one of those people who were kind of like, you know, the phone is going to die or this channel is going to die, but they're just, we just keep adding channels, right? It's just like, now we got uh, chat and then you got WhatsApp and, and, and video. And I'm like, oh my goodness, nothing's ever dying. We're just adding to, is it really difficult to add a new channel? Is that a lot of change management? How do you kind of think through the why and the what of adding channels. And I'm thinking even just a little bit about video as you'd kind of alluded to earlier. Is that difficult? How'd you go through and think think about that? It, it's not, Gabe. And it, you know, for us, we started the company eight years ago with one model and today we have 17. So when a customer says to us, you should be doing this type of bike, I wish my bike could do this. That to us is, okay, we need to go develop something to do that. Because if customers are asking for that, we need to offer it, right? Same thing with channels of communication. So customers are saying to us, I'd really like to video next to you with the bike so I could see what someone who's 5'8 looks like next to that bike. Or I'd really like to show you something that's going on with my bike and I'd like you to give me real-time feedback. So if the customer's asking for it, we have to do it, right? Whether it's on the sales side or the support side, it, that, that's our job. And so customer with a K is, has made it easy. And it, you know, to, to Amy's point, the channels are there. So for us, the channels have really been there almost before we've needed them, which has been great. Customer with a K has been ahead of the curve. Uh, and then anything we want to integrate that's not there, we've had no problem with our in-house team to, to do it quickly. So it's been really easy for us. And now that we have this single source of the truth, 360 degree view of the customer, we know that anything we do can go right into it. And we know how important it is to have that 360 view. So adding channels is easy. And making sure they're all in one spot is what's critical for our team and our ability to expeditiously help that customer. Let's move away from channels for a second. I want to hit one other thing you guys mentioned earlier in the talk track. And it was just this kind of this technology idea. I uh, want to focus a little bit in a little, another buzzword area with AI or artificial intelligence, automation, maybe a general technology. But I'm curious as you think about that, as you think about this movement towards more AI, more intelligence, more tech, what role does that play in your business in delivering that exceptional customer experience that I think your brands have really been able to use to differentiate themselves from the competitors? Amy, let's come back to you. Thoughts on that one? I keep, you know, you got to have intention. Like I think that sometimes intention is missed. And I think that what happens is the intent becomes to cost less or the intent becomes to um, have, you know, less volume or things like that. When again, like the intention should be to serve your customer. I mean, really, it should be the thing that makes their lives easier. It makes your agent's lives easier. So keeping that front of mind as you um, kind of go on the journey and know that it's going to evolve. It's never going to stay the same. So nothing is ever going to be set it and forget it in customer service. It's never going to happen. People are not set it and forget it. So yeah, we've that. seen that right over the past couple, few years with the pandemic. It's like, oh my goodness, so many things change, especially in this space that get ready because it is going to be quite a ride. David, what would you add to this? How's your journey been on thinking about doubling down on technology, some automations, and maybe even that idea of artificial intelligence to help scale the business? Yeah, I, I like what you said about enablement um, a, a lot. For us, we're not as far down the path, I'd say, as Amy is, but we're we're starting. So everybody, like I said, who works at Priority, worked at a bike shop, is a, is a serious athlete, loves bicycles. And so when somebody contacts us, we want them to get that person that's right for them right away. And, it, you know, it's a, a quick side note. I just was calling the, you know, the Internet company and. You know, you get to one person and then you have to get to a level two technical support and then you have to get to level three technical support. That's not what we want, right? 
So, so we want to find out really quickly, does somebody have like a sales sizing question to know what model should fit them? Do they have an assembly question uh, that, that's pretty straightforward? Or are, is their bike making a weird noise that they really need a bike mechanic? And so we want to route them to the right person right away. And that bike mechanic who knows about that strange noise your bike might be making isn't the best person to help you with sizing, right? So you don't want the most technical person on every call and you don't want the most uh, sales focused person on every call. You need to be able to route them. So we use not AI, but automation to figure out wh where is somebody going? Let's get them to the person because our support team is, is, you know, everybody has a role. Let's get them to the person that can help them the quickest and get them quickest to the answer. And then the, the, the AI that we do use is in customer with a K, there's sentiment analysis. And that's really important to us. So the sentiment analysis in customer with a K, and Gabe, you could probably describe this better than I can, is reading whatever's in the, uh, the context of the message there and trying to figure out where that customer is uh, sentiment-wise. And that's really important to us because if somebody's coming with high energy and positivity, we want to meet that high energy and positivity. But if someone's coming with vulnerability, we also want to meet that with compassion. And we want to figure out where that person is so that as we start to scan their question, we can understand their sentiment and find the right sentiment to get back to them with. And, and I think that uh, part of AI has been really important to us so that no matter where you are in the organization, you know a little bit about what the customer's feeling in their language. And I'm glad we actually went in that order because Amy, he almost, he almost kind of answered like the... Um, yeah, let's use this as a way to make the customer experience better, right? You didn't hear in David's terms the word even deflection, for example, like let's shoot customers away. It was it actually flipped it, went for the agent. You know, how do we make it so, you know, an agent gets the right person at the right time so the customer actually feels like they're talking to the right person in the right language or they're talking to the expert that they should have. And, and then ultimately the sentiment helps you enter the conversation with, that's not about elimination. That's about enablement. That helps businesses do better and scale. And I, again, those one-two punch on that conversation, Amy, we don't want to eliminate. It's not about cost cut. It's about making things better. And if we can find technology to do that, let's do it. If not, we might need to pull it back and kind of rethink that a little bit. Oh, that was a great kind of uh, one-two punch there. Thank you. Okay. Well, our time's getting a little bit short. Um, I do have just two more questions I wanted to throw out to each of you. One's just kind of a summary around big picture. We've hit this idea of channels, personalization, a little bit on technology. Um, and I'm curious, as you guys have done this in your business, implemented some of these changes, um, enabled these reps to do better things, how do you feel like that is translated in the business? If you, obviously, things are going fairly, businesses are growing, and I think your brands have that kind of elusive um CX where people are coming just because of the experience, but anything you could share with us that as you've introduced some of these changes, the business has ultimately seen positive changes in the way that customers have responded or um, agents have responded, et cetera. David, let, maybe I'll start with you. Thoughts on that one? Yeah. So Gabe, and, and we've talked a lot about our agents. We always say that we're a customer centric company and our customer comes first, but really our employees come first. So we know that if we want to have great customer experiences, it starts with our employees being super happy. If our team isn't super happy, they can't give that great experience. So happy team equals happy customer. The best way to take care of your customers is to take care of your team. And so that, it, you know, we enable our team. We make sure they know how important the customer journey is for us as a company. And it's really the foundation of who we are. Like I talked about work, we started with crowdfunding. We are a company that without our customer, we wouldn't be a company. So we every day have to say thank you to our customers. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you if you have a problem coming to us and giving us the time and space to help you. So we've been growing at 50 to 100% year over year since inception. Uh, bicycles have been a certainly a growing, a growing market. Uh, we feel consumer direct bikes is it, difficult. People, just like clothing, often want to try it before they can own it. And so being able to give that customer centric experience online is super important and we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep adding channels and we're going to keep give, empowering our employees to make sure they're really happy and giving them the tools they need to make sure that our customers can be really happy. I love it. Yeah. Congratulations again. Great. The brand I think says it all. So Amy, over to you, any quick results or things you've kind of seen as you've tried to double down on some of these things to really boost the customer experience? 
Yeah. When I joined Lulu's, my instant uh, desire was to support and um, better set up our team. I think that we were really um, poorly equipped when I joined, and that is so unfair. <laughs> it's so unfair to put people on the front lines um, with zero equipment that's really ready for um, all that's coming at them. And so I think that what we've really um, bought ourselves over time um, is not just tools, it's it's truly we've allowed our agents um, to have time. And I think that that's something that is so rare in a call center. That's where it becomes known for these, you know, dead end jobs. And nobody actually wants to stay with a, a call center, you know, super, super high turnover rates. These things that that call centers are known for. We've flipped the script. You know, it's we have a, a development program that we were able to implement because of the time that we were able to have. So internally inside um, our customer service team, we have a development program um, which allows us to invest in their career growth, um, focus on them as individuals and what they need um, from their leadership team. Again, we hire, you know, however many people, how can we possibly expect one model to make it work for them either? You know, so everybody has an individual need just like our customers do. Um, so again, it's all about people and what it's allowed us to do is really truly reinvent the call center job. Um, and we think of it more like an amazing starting career in, um, you know, like a communications field. Um, we really believe that uh, human connection is a great way to really develop strong communication skills and, and can really, really serve people um, in their future careers. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, as we wrap, really, again, wanted to say thank you to both Dave and Amy for joining us to talk about this idea of turning conversations into customer advocacy. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.